I'm Christy Klaus. And I'm Jason Dunn, and we're with the Wake County Environmental Services LEAD program. Our purpose is to prevent child lead poisoning in children that are six and under. Lead dust can be toxic in small amounts. For example, a sugar packet filled with lead dust and spread over an entire football field is considered a lead hazard. We perform site investigations to determine the source of lead in children. These investigations are done in schools, daycares, and private residences. We focus on child-occupied buildings that predate the year of 1978, since these buildings may contain lead-based paint. Children that are six and under are primarily exposed to lead dust through hand-to-mouth activity. This lead dust gets into their bloodstream and can cause an elevated blood lead level or confirm lead poisoning. Children can also be exposed to lead from soil and water contamination. Lead can be found in plumbing lines that have brass or lead solder. Children can be exposed to lead from other sources, such as uh, vinyl mini blinds, um, spices that are grown in contaminated soils, uh, foreign toys from overseas, foreign makeup products, and some Mexican candies. When we do a lead investigation, we take x-ray readings to see if there's any lead paint in building components. When we do an investigation, we also do environmental sampling, and we would sample dust, soil, and water. We take these samples to the North Carolina State Lab for analysis. Hi, I'm Bonnie Forbes. I'm a chemist. And here at the State Lab, we analyze environmental samples for lead using the flame atomic absorption method. The flame AA aspirates a sample that's been liquefied into the flame where it becomes atomized. And I, I'd like to demonstrate the flame. It's the probe sucks up the flame, and this is lithium. That's why it looks like a pretty color. The flame atomizes the sample as it's aspirated in there. And there's a lead lamp like this that shines through the cloud of atoms. And uh, the lead atoms ionize as it absorbs the light energy from the lamp. Then there's a detector over here that measures the amount of light that's absorbed and compares it to that of known standards to obtain a concentration value for the sample. This is a sampling of the kinds of non-routine samples that are sent in to us to analyze. Um, uh, typically we get soils and paints and wipes, like these are dust wipes. Um, they're wiped on windowsills and so on and get sent in. And we have toys. As you can see, our sample needs to be in liquid form. So how do we get this to look like this through a rigorous acid digestion process? We'll initially give it nitric acid, two increments and then five increments so as to not put too much in too quickly. Heat that for two hours, then I'll add two mLs of water to sort of dilute it a little tiny bit before I add two mLs of hydrogen peroxide, which will get quite a reaction. Another two hours, and then the last will be with very strong hydrochloric acid concentrated for 20 minutes. When I'm done analyzing the samples, I review the data, it's printed out, and I enter it in the computer where it is, uh, it can generate a report that is sent out to the submitters. Private physician's offices in Wake County Health Department refer children to us whenever they've checked their lead in their blood. Hi, my name is Marilyn Perez Biswark. I'm a childhood nurse at the Wake County Human Services. Lead poisoning is caused by inhalation or ingestion of a substance, uh, in this case um, uh, metal, um, called lead, 
that's, that is found in our environment. Lead is very harmful to children. At lower levels, the effects may not be obvious, but low levels of lead may harm the nervous system, including the brain, interfere with growth, lower IQ scores, and make learning difficult. At very high levels, lead may cause coma, convulsions, and death. Remember, symptoms may not be easy to see. Regular lead screening and routine physical exams are recommended. To help prevent ingestion of lead by their children, parents should wash their children's hands, fingernails, and face often. They should wash the toys daily, clean surfaces that child comes in contact with, change the rinse water uh, often, Make sure children play in safe, grassy areas. Be aware for chipping and flaking of paint in the home and do not try to remove this yourself. You should let your landlord know that the paint is chipping or uh, flaking in the home or notify the environmental health services. Shower and change before coming in contact with your child if you work uh, or suspected you work with lead, and wash your clothes separately from those of your children. Here at the Wake County Human Services, the health department, age is, is the main uh, reason uh, that we will do a lead test or that the doctor will order a lead test. The initial test that's done is a capillary. That means it's taken from a, a finger prick that's done on the child's um, finger. The elevated lead has to be confirmed with the venous blood draw because there could be contamination on the child's finger. Desired results will, will be from 1 to 9 micrograms per deciliter. That is considered normal. If the lead level is 20 and above, that is considered lead poisoning. and a home lead investigation is then mandatory. We monitor renovations to verify the proper re removal of lead hazards. We also perform clearance inspections to verify that the renovations have been completed properly and we do environmental sampling as a follow-up to verify that no lead dust or lead, uh, high lead levels of lead in soil or water remain. These are examples of remediation work to remove lead hazards.